Hello, my old school soul food family. Chef Jeff is back with another video. All right, y'all. You saw the video. Sunday is time for the Sunday menu. It's the first Sunday dinner menu favorite ideas for 2022. Like y'all know, I'm back on my regular schedule here after the big holiday season and my first month and a half of retirement. I'm enjoying life. As always, enjoying life. And I'm taking it to the next level. Seem like I'm working harder than I did before, but I'm enjoying life even more because I'm my own boss. I run my own thing. There's nobody dictating what I need to do, when I need to do it, why I need to do it, and how I need to do it. I do it my way and I worked all my life pretty much. I'm 53, I'll be 54 in about three weeks, but I worked many years of my life to get to this level and I achieved it a lot, lot, lot uh, less time than others and I'll do a detailed video on how I did that coming up this week later on this week so anyway y'all this Sunday menu favorite idea favorites and this is what I got going on y'all I got me some purple hub peas here see these I bought these in the summertime when they're very plentiful I usually buy 10 pounds at a time I usually buy purple hull or I'll, and I'll buy creamer peas and I'll, sometime I'll buy a Crowder peas, those three times peas. And I'll split them with my mom. My mom's here now, so I just keep them here. When she was living away from here, I used to split them with her and take them down to the country. But she's here in the city with me and my brother. So now I keep them all here. And what I do, y'all know I love my food saver. What I do, I put in like little one pound bags like this. See that? I lay them in my freezer whenever I need them. I have them. I got four more bags left, so that'll last me until um, until the summer gets here, and I'll replenish again. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna wash them again. Even though when I did bag these up, y'all, I did wash them, but I'm gonna just wash them again. Can't never wash them too many times. I just take them out of my my little food saver bag here, and give them a little rinse. There. Now let me show y'all what I got going over here in this pot right here. See that goodness? I already started a little early because I know this video is going to take a while. So, what I did, what I have here, I got me some smoked ham hawks. Look at that. Look at those. Look at those smoked ham hawks, y'all. Got three good meaty smoked ham hawks. Then I got some salt bacon, salt joe we call it. I got that cooking in there. I got a very, very, very rich stock here, y'all. AKA pot liquor. Y'all gotta be growing up from the country and know what pot liquor is, y'all. So I got that going. So anyway, I'm gonna take this out of here because I'm gonna pick this meat off the bone here. Let that cool while these peas are cooking in that good old rich pot liquor. Get this one out of here. Look how tender they are, y'all. They've been simmering about an hour and a half, y'all. Now, I'm gonna leave them, uh, I'm gonna just go and leave this, uh, your salt joel in there. They ain't gonna hurt nothing. So I got my peas all washed off here. I'm gonna just pour my peas right in here. And I'm gonna let them cook to death. Purple hull peas, they kinda look like black eyed peas. And somebody gonna say, oh, them black eyed peas, these are not black eyed peas. You probably never went and picked and shelled no purple hull peas. If you have, you'll know the difference in a minute. A lot of people ask that, oh, they got a little hull in there. Hold on, y'all. You know, I, my mama used to put hulls, you know, the little hulls in the peas? She used to do that. Anybody used to do that? I don't do that. I never liked them. But she used to uh, clip off a little of them, I don't know what you call them, where you clip the peas off and they're still in the pod. And she put them in there too and cook them. I never like that. I like my peas like this. So we're gonna let this simmer about 45 minutes, y'all. These peas here. And this goodness, see this and this is the goodness right here, y'all. See that? All that nice uh, awesome meat there. Ham hooks. I'm gonna take that off. Meat off the bone. I'm gonna chop it up. And once these peas are pretty much ready, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna season them. Because I didn't put no salt or nothing in here. Because remember, I'm cooking with salt bacon. And that has a lot of salt. So I want to make sure I don't add no season till the end so it's not too salty. So I didn't salt it at the beginning. So, yeah, I'm going to let these cook here about, 
Ooh, it's gonna take about 45 minutes. I'll come through probably halfway through the cooking process and join it with y'all. I show y'all how they're coming along. I'm gonna give me some old school cornbread, put it in the oven, and it's all about a bowl of purple hub pea and some cornbread. You don't need nothing else, y'all. Like my mama say, just give her some peas and cornbread. She don't need nothing else. This old school style. We'll be right back, y'all. All right, y'all. We about halfway through the cooking process here. Let me show you what we got here, y'all. Oh, yeah. Look at this. Mm-hmm. Trying to get that creamy look in there that I absolutely like. That salt, Joe. And that's the reason I cut it so big when I put the salt bacon in there so it wouldn't disintegrate. If you chop it so small through the cooking process... It will kind of try to disappear on you. So, <clears throat> so this got about a, another 20 minutes to go. Now, I've tasted this. I need some chicken base in here. Let me see what else I got while I was off camera. I got me some old school cornbread. I just did it in my cake pan. <clears throat> so that's gonna go good. And I got me some old school looking. Gotta have the chow chow with your peas, y'all. Old school chow chow. I got about six jars left. I used to make about 40 jars in the summer, and I give about 30 of it away, and I keep about 10 for my personal use. All right, I'm gonna put a chicken base in here, y'all, because I just tasted this, and it definitely needs more seasoning. So I'm gonna put some chicken base in here. It gives it a little bit more distinct with flavor than just salt and pepper, which I'm gonna add too. I have to make sure this is not too salty, but I like to add my chicken base and seasoning right halfway through the cooking process. Make sure you really, really get incorporated in there. Make sure all, I, and I, I use a wet chicken base, and I get mine at H-E-B. Now, most stores have a wet chicken base. It's just over there where you see the the seasonings and the the uh, sauces or whatever. It's right in there. I think it's by the gravy mixes and stuff like this, if you buy gravy mixes. And if you're still buying gravy mixes after watching my channel more than six months, I'm going to have to whip you. Because I already told y'all, quit buying gravy mixes and those cream of mushroom soups and those cream of chicken soups. Quit doing that. It's, it's useless. It's unnecessary. If you're going to cook homemade, believe me, I use some sometimes some easy steam mixer to help my cooking. But those items, is unnecessary. You're already in the pot. You can make your gravy in less than five minutes. You can make your makeup for those cream of mushroom, cream of chickens and stuff like that. You can do it right in your pot. So let me taste this here. Let's see here. So a little bit more chicken base. And yeah, y'all, I guess cause I'm so adamant about that because all my years in cooking, I've been blessed to work in a kitchen where we didn't use nothing out of a can. And the 34 years that I worked there while I just retired, everything was scratch. We did all scratch cooking. We bought very little things in can. We made our own stocks. We made our own gravies. We made our own soups. We have a butcher shop. We brought the meat in whole. He broke it down and caught. We brought our fish in whole. We covered it down. And I was uh, I was blessed to see this, and that's still in my brain to use everything from scratch. Everything was scratch cooking. Everything. So that's why I'm very adamant about that. Okay, let me try this. Let me taste this again. See what we got here. Oh, yeah. That's it. Like I said, that chicken base just takes stuff over the top, y'all. It really does. I really love this stuff. So, anyway, y'all, I'm going to let this cook another 15 minutes or so. I still got a job to do over here. See this? I got to get this off the bone leg. It's fine. It doesn't cool down enough where I can handle it. It was too hot earlier. I'm going to take the meat off of there and give it a rough chop, big rough chop. And then we're going to add it back in these peas. Cut me some cornbread, put me some little chow chow on there. And that's an old school Sunday meal right there. I don't need nothing else, y'all. So we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back here. These things are ready. About a minute more to go. Look at this creaminess. Look how creamy that is, y'all. I don't have to add no roux. I don't have to add no flour. It's just the creaminess. See that nice pot liquor? That's what I'm talking about. The peas are perfectly cooked. They're not mushy. But they perfectly cook. See that? Let me show y'all one here. Somebody, if they said, no, they ain't. See that? See how, see that? Ooh, that's hot. See that? Perfectly cooked. Now, we're going to add this meat back in here. Which my mama going to kill me because so much meat. But I love a lot of meat. 
I give her hers. I just make sure she'll get more meat than uh, peas. Put that goodness back in there. Look at that, y'all. Now, the reason I put so much meat also, because this is a one-pot meal. And this is all I'm going to eat for Sunday after I get home from church. Of course, it's a Saturday night that I'm making this. But I'm going to rewarm this up when I get out of the church tomorrow. It's just Sunday when y'all see it. And this going to be my gonna be my dinner, my lunch. Lunch, dinner, however you say it, after service, after church service. All right. One day I'm going to do a video on the day in, day in the time of me on Sunday from the time I wake up. Because I do the same ritual every Sunday. I stop at the same place and have me a little breakfast. I do the same thing. So maybe I'll do that one day. You want to see me on the Sunday <laughs> ritual. Okay, I'm going to let this simmer one minute <clears throat> more. And then I'm going to cut it off. When I come back, I'm going to have it all plated up. I'm going to have my cornbread, my chow chow, and everything, y'all. And we're going to have us a big old pot of uh, purple hub peas, ham hocks, and salt joe. Look at that. That's good. That's good eating now, y'all. You don't have to be from the country. I guess you do. You just enjoy this. So anyway, y'all, we'll be right back. Okay, y'all, we are back. Let me show you this plate of goodness here right here, y'all. Look at that. Now, look. That's all you need. You got your meat. You got your vegetables. You got your corn, cornbread there. Now, I give this to somebody in the country. I keep saying country because it's just old school country to me, eating like this. I mean, my city folks, maybe you eat like this, but you wasn't, you have to be, you got some kind of country jeans and stuff. Because this is my childhood. Many, many nights, that's how we survive. Beans and cornbread, peas and cornbread, a little, little side meat in it. That's how we got through, y'all. I didn't grow up with no silver spoon and, and all that. I grew up like a normal people. Working hard, my mom and dad worked hard, and just we never went without. But hey, we always had a meal on the table. We grew our own stuff, raised our own stuff, and like I say, we ate good. A lot of people look at this. Oh, that's how you ate, yeah. That's how I ate. That's how I grew up eating. So now we just test this out, y'all. Cause this is my dinner for tomorrow, and then my little uh, uh, snack for tonight. You know, I like to put a little hot sauce on my stuff there. I ain't know where to start. You know what I do? I like to put that cornbread in there and let it soak up in that pot liquor. Oh my God. Hold on, let me do this right. Let me get a spoon. Mm. Oh, wow. Let me look at that cornbread and get that pot and salt liquor. Give me a little piece of meat on there. Trying to get a good bite for y'all. Little chow chow. Okay. Look at that. Look at that bite right here. We're going in, y'all. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. A little bit more. You gotta have a lot of juice in this, y'all. My mama taught me that years ago, baby. Gotta have that pot liquor in there. Got that cornbread. Mm-hmm. Mm, wow. One more bite, y'all. I'll close the video up. Mm. Yeah, I like that fat there. Don't judge me. Mm. Oh, wow. We're good eating now. It is good. Good old wholesome. Put meat on your bone. Fill you up. Fill you. Make your belly happy. Type cooking right here, y'all. Don't get much better. Anyway, hold on, I'm giving a swig of water, y'all. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. All right. I, I, I truly love my cooking, y'all. I truly love real. And on the channel, I see people, I mean, that's their thing, what they do, but they cook food, but I don't get to see them enjoy it. I don't get to see how the cake come out. I don't get to see how the pie come out, the lasagna, the spaghetti. I want to know. I, I just want to, like I'm ready there. That's why I do this for y'all. 
I'll let you know. Look, a co-worker of mine, a former co-worker, he told me that. He watched my video. Gerald Johnson, if you're watching, I'm giving you a shout out, buddy. I'm giving you a shout out right here. I love you, I miss you, buddy. But he told me, um, he said, yeah, when you watch my when you watch my video, he can tell I sincerely enjoy it because I keep eating one. I get another bite, I get another bite. And he said that shows I really enjoy my meal. And and I do it without thinking, y'all, because it's I'm so into my element sometimes when I'm eating. I forget, look, I gotta get to the video, but I'm on video. When I have a team here, sometimes they'll tell me if you need to cut all that or not. And sometimes here by myself, huh, I'm in my element, y'all. I'm sorry. It's just, it's good eating. And sometimes trying to rush the video, falling over cameras and lights and stuff, will stuff be so good. But anyway, y'all, let me close this video out. If you like this video, please share, please comment, please subscribe. Please follow my other social media accounts Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest. And oldschoolsoulfood.com. Remember the hashtag 2022. Helping others with a purpose. Old School Soul Food. And until next time, have a blessed Old School Soul Food Day. And I will see y'all in the next video. Y'all have a blessed, happy Sunday. Stay prayed up and stay safe. Love y'all. Bye.